Hello and good morning. Welcome to Career Counseling Online's morning session of Morning Vibes. You guys are doing good, uh, presumably, and I'm safe um, myself. Well, today we are going to talk about initiative. What exactly is initiative? We hear this word a lot when we are working, um, even even by our elders, even um, you know, our mentors and our teachers. So what does initiative means when we are talking in terms of our daily life? To me, initiative is filling in the gap when the leader is absent. For me, initiative is taking that proactive measure when nobody is watching you, when nobody is asking you to do something. Initiative is your own effort to fill in and continue the show and surpass all the other deliverables. Hi, this is Sanjay here and today we are going to talk about initiative in your workplace. I read somewhere of a great statement by a great leader. It so happened that the founder of this organization expired, passed away and the organization was still operative. They met their quarter balances, they met their yearly revenues, they met their profitability, and everything was in place. Now, during a press conference, it was asked to the then director, like with the main person passing away, with the founder no more within your organization, how is it that this year also you not only met the profit margin, the revenue, you were able to employ more employees, you recruited more candidates, you generated more revenue, and you were able to lead the competition. The answer which came in is, a, you know, a mind-boggling reply. He mentioned that our master, our master is no more, but he has left behind his masterpieces. And he waved towards his managers, towards his other directors, and he meant that their founder acted as a teacher and taught them so well that even with his absence, the organization was delivering at a greater rate. Exactly, we are talking about Steve Jobs. We are talking about Apple Corporation. When this reply came in, that shows the kind of faith, that shows the kind of trust, that shows the kind of connectivity Apple Corporation has with its own employees. And the kind of feeling of vision sharing be with the mission of the employees of the organization. Now, when we talk of such a kind of emotion driving an organization, we can only talk in terms of success, in terms of growth for employees, success in terms of new products coming in, success in terms of new competition being won. This is one factor which differentiates one organization from others. What is that? Is the kind of initiative that its employees are taking towards sharing the vision, delivering the mission. Now, when you are an employee and you are thinking about your part of your growth, there are a couple of things which you can work upon. Like for instance, first point is observe your bosses. I have spoken in many videos wherein I have mentioned that the people do leave their boss, they do not leave their organization. That is absolutely true to a certain extent. But it is also true that employees do leave organization for their own reasons also, which we're going to uh, discuss in some other video shows. Now, when you are an employee, how can you take initiative? Is 
what is going to set you apart from other employees set you apart from the deliverables of others and set you in the spotlight of recognition and assigning more responsibilities at the time of new ventures at the time of new projects and so on so how can an employee learn to take initiative because initiative is something that you need to practice you need to learn from your surroundings and you need to practice on a religious basis on a continuous basis to deliver only your best how can you do that the first easy step is observe your boss many a times we hear people saying i am a follower of that spiritual leader i am a follower of that political leader i am a follower of uh, this educational leader now what is happening is majorly what is happening is when we are talking about being a follower we are just trying to be somebody in the bandwagon following that person's you know philosophy ideas and so on what we literally need to do is we need to learn to practice those philosophies those faith which our leaders are practicing which my boss is doing which my immediate reporting superior is doing the best way to learn the corporate initiative taking procedure is by following your boss by following your manager by following your directors because if they are in that position if they are delivering constantly if they are being appreciated for their deliverables if they are meeting their targets if they are setting new deadlines and uh, you know accomplishing them it means on their part irrespective of his personal traits or whatever he is doing his job for which he is being recruited in this organization at 100% so what can you do to be 100% yourself yes it's true that you are putting up your hard effort it is true that you are reading a lot you are trying to learn new technology absolutely fine but observing your leaders observing your boss will let you act according to them in accordance to the thought process when you are observing your boss your leader or your director what you trying to do is you are trying to analyze how he is or she is analyzing a particular situation and getting through with that situation getting through with that challenge getting that deadline met getting the productivity target met getting that customer loyalty being maintained so when you start observing them you tr- you will find irrespective of your likeness or dislikeness about the person if we talk about only in terms of the professional grounds you will find that he is like as stephen covey mentioned in his book like uh, seven habits of highly successful people you will find that he has his own schedule he has his own way of doing things he takes notes he writes down things he puts that that sticky note on the board he sets you know small targets he celebrates small victories he uh, you know uh, reads a lot so this kind of things are the insight into the mind of your boss the insight into the mind of your director so what you get to do is you get to learn from the leader by observing them so you need to observe them okay so that uh, that is one way of very constructively learning how to think deliver like a leader now when we uh, talk about thinking and uh, uh, you know getting into the mindset of the leaders next part would come is start taking decisions small decisions small decisions it doesn't have to be like you take the decision for the quarter you take the decision for the next 5 years sales project or sales plan you can take decisions small decisions in terms of 
the deliverables, in terms of man management, in terms of process improvement, what you can do is when the boss is present, when the leader is present, you start taking small decisions. Now, what will that do is first thing is if those small decisions are getting bigger results, you get noticed for putting up an extra effort. If not, you still get the chance to go up to your boss, to go up to your leader and get those clarified as like I was thinking this way, the process could be improved. And I was thinking if these are the parameters which we could include in this process, which would make a difference. But uh, I'm not getting that kind of result that I expected. What is it that I'm getting wrong in this implementation? See, when that happens, it builds up a very healthy relationship with you and your boss and it opens up. It literally opens up. It's not a cl you know close-ended uh, situation. It's an open-ended situation wherein the boss feels significant, wherein your leader feels included, wherein the leader sees that you literally take initiative in learning. And above all, though this is a psychological part, he feels important that you have asked him or her because you accept this fact that they know that part of the job much better than you. When that happens, you know, the leaders automatically opens up to your questions, to your um, queries, and they give you feedback. Now, you need to understand, this is the feedback which is coming from your leader backed by his or her experience, which you might not have. Like let's, for instance, if your director is leading the organization department and if you go up to him or her and ask for a feedback, ask for what's going wrong and that you really want to get these things done, when he or she gives you a feedback that is backed by their decision making for years, that is backed by their understanding of the situation because this is a situation which you might be facing for the very first time but in their growth to the position of a director or uh, a managing director or a head they have already encountered this situation they have already you know found out what was the weakness which was causing this threat to the process so what they will be sharing is they will be sharing their strength of insight to understand the weakness of the process. So when you put all things done, the SWOT analysis is already done and you learn to get the things done. So start taking small decisions in terms of how things could be done better, what could be done better to create better customer experience, how fast that call can be answered, how fast that email can be answered. Yes, there is a SLA of any mail being answered within six hours or four hours, but can you take that initiative and get that answered within one hour? Because if that is happening, the customer experience changes, the customer uh, expectation also changes, and the customers feels that now they are being treated much more important uh, you know importantly uh, so in 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 a, in a way that they feel that now the response time is much better now uh, the way the interaction is much smoother now my uh, because that particular customer might be also having a hard day and when you take that initiative on behalf of your organization and make that customer's life easy what you have is customer loyalty. What you have is customer recommendation for you have, uh, you know, when they talk to your director or your manager, they're certainly going to talk about you, about how you made their life easy, about how uh, they could meet the deadline because you took an extra um, initiative in helping them out even after, uh, you know, uh, the closure hours or the normal business hours uh, and they did. Uh, not lose any business just because one of the employee from the organization helped them. So what that does is it builds up a mutual symbiosis. The customer, the director, you all in the process get to understand one thing that we are all in this process together and a small initiative 
from an uh, employee is making such a big difference. Now, when you yourself see that big difference coming up, you also feel connected to the process. You become a part of the growth. And when the organization grows, trust me, there is no way you could be left uh, behind uh, and uh, not being included in the success parade. Now, the thing is, when your director finds that you are making substantial change by taking small decisions, by small initiatives, in a time when there is an emergency, they start thinking that this guy been taking initiative even when I didn't ask him to. Now that there is a situation, uh, can we just give some more responsibility to this guy and see how he delivers? So you become much more accountable. You become much more um, uh, a dependent person when the time of crisis arises. Now, what will that do is when you fill in that crisis, when you remove that block, when you remove that pain, you become a part of problem solving team. You become a part of uh, those uh, employees who are productive beyond their expected deliverables. So not only you pave the you know road to success, but also you grow internally as a decision maker, as a better leader, as somebody who's taking decision, who's growing with the organization, who can think beyond being just an employee sitting on a desk and doing his job or her job. So that brings me to the third point of uh, how to take initiative is take charge. Take charge just because your boss or your immediate supervisor, see, they are also human beings. They, there might be instances where they might not show up to office for days. Like could be that some emergency meeting came up and they had to uh, fly to the other city to attend that meeting. Could be some seminars that they had to suddenly attend. Um, or uh, God forbid, it could be that they were not doing well uh, health-wise. So in that case, when you step forward, you take a decision and you, uh, you know, I'm not asking you to fill into the shoes exactly and start acting bossy. What you need to understand is this is the time for you to take charge, to fill in that vacuum, to get the show running, to get the things done, to get that project target met, to get that productivity from the people in the team delivered. When that happens, see, here is one director or your leader who is either sick or uh, stuck up in a meeting or in a seminar and at the back of the mind he is being uh, literally worried as to oh god today's productivity is gone or this five days productivity is gone because now that i'm not there it might be a haywire and things might be completely out of control and you know the worst part is we might be losing customers we might be having bad customer experiences now when he comes back and sees that nothing such has happened rather a couple of good emails have come from customers or loyal uh, you know uh, business collaborators that you know uh, this uh, past five days um, you know we had some great experience working with your team and especially these are the guys who literally helped us solve our problem and um, um, yeah we understand you were not reachable over the phone or over the email but nothing to worry things were fine we were able to meet our deadlines we did not lose business so you know it, it it's a, a very healthy situation it's a very healthy scenario wherein you know the boss when they come back and they feel that uh, you know even with their absence the show was on not only on it was much better so he starts trusting his employees and those employees who have been filling in the gap without even being asked uh, to uh, and obviously you know I'm not talking about being in the good book of the directors or the leaders. Leaders should be unbiased. They should be, uh, you know, putting all the employees uh, uh, looking forward to them um, with the same kind of emotion, feelings and their professionalism. But the thing is, obviously, this is very human uh, psyche that when uh, somebody helps us, when somebody relieves us of our pain or of our problem, or helps us in solving a challenge or a situation or a stuck-up situation, we generally tend to trust this person more. We generally try to uh, lean on that person for more feedbacks, for more 
um, you know suggestion for more help and you in the in the future what happens is um, uh, when we are you know we can plan better actually as a director or as a head of the organization they can plan better that okay um, there is this seminar which is very important where if I attend we might be able to bring in more customers more collaborators and I need to be there but uh, he does not have to think like okay so even if I'm gone uh, like uh, the show cannot be run so what will happen is next time there is one important seminar or a meeting or a collaborators meeting which needs to be attended these directors can you know be very relaxed and they can just call upon those employees and say last time guys you did a wonderful job that was great that literally helped me literally help the organization so uh, there is this meeting which um, I have to attend and uh, this is the there is this deadlines to be met from this uh, customers this um, uh, you know business uh, collaborators so could you guys help me this time so that I can go ahead and take business to the next level now see what is happening is it is uh, building up a relation of mutual trust mutual dependency when that constantly happens there uh, I can assure you one thing there would be one day when the director feels that or the head of the organization feels like uh, since this uh, guy is constantly delivering uh, the kind of responsibilities uh, which are belonging to me and um, they are doing it great they are delivering it with their utmost potential so why not promote this guy why not bring this guy on the board why not make him like if he's a team lead make him a manager if he's a manager why not we appoint him as a director because if he's a guy who's constantly proactive he's a guy who's constantly taking initiative he's a guy who shares the vision of the organization with us and is always stepping forward to um, you know deliver the best even when he's not asked to or she's not asked to now what will that do is that will automatically command a promotion for you that will automatically command a recommendation for you so you know even after years uh, when you leave this organization if you happen to leave now what will that do is you will be able to carry along with you a tremendous amount of uh, recommendation and it will not be difficult for you to answer this question like could you define that situation wherein um, you went uh, out of your deliverables and uh, got things done right I mean uh, or uh, please mention that situation wherein you stay forward and showed leadership now many a times during the interviews we find uh, uh, you know candidates or professionals answering it very vaguely it is because it is because they have never taken that initiative to step in and fill in that gap and deliver like their team leaders or managers or the directors it is always that they have felt that I unless I am being told to do something I uh, I will not do something now what that does is neither you learn neither you are able to uh, you know contribute neither you pave that path to growth that's the worst part of it third is like you know you are not able to carry along with you uh, very good morning Sham, uh, Sh uh, Shamda thanks a lot for joining me uh, for the show thank you so much thank you so much thanks for motivating um, now the thing is when you step forward and take that initiative take that charge the management the directors the board of directors the stakeholders understand you as an employee who is proactive as an employee who can be counted upon at a time of crisis as an employee who understands not only understands the vision of the organization but is also sharing his uh, you know productivity and his productivity is aligned to the vision and mission of the organization this is a kind of employee that any organization would look forward to and this is uh, these are the kind of employees which none of the organization wants to let go of and this uh, we have always seen that many organization has employees who has grown from a very basic uh, 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 you know level to the uh, you know uh, designation of a director or a, a managing director and so on how did this guy do it it is just by observing their uh, you know deliverables their proactiveness that we can learn a lot 
it's a complete uh, I, I wouldn't say it's completely lie that corporate world is sometimes biased but the thing is guys that's just an excuse uh, for the lazy thinkers for the non-doers that oh you know my luck was not good and um, uh, the director was biased the management did not look uh, into my deliverables it's it's never like that see forget about those things if you are constantly taking initiative, if you are constantly jumping into the vacuum and taking the charge, if you are constantly observing your leader, your director, your boss, forget about that reward and recognition within the organization. Think about the way you will grow within yourself, the kind of evolution which happens from inside, within. From being an employee, you start thinking like a team leader. From a team leader, you start thinking like a team manager, even when you are not those designated people. Think about it. So when you go out of this organization in search of a new job also, the kind of answers which come out of you shows you as a very, very strong, positively motivated guy who, honestly speaking, I have had this personal experience wherein I actually applied for the position of a team leader and I was interviewed by the director and let me tell you uh, this interview was um, you know cancelled six times and every time I approached their office I was mentioned that the director was not available because he has cancelled his return to India and um, you know Two things which inspired me to join this organization. First was the HR head uh, who was a highly motivated person. He was constantly showing high values about the organization. He was constantly showing that uh, he was apologizing for not being able to inform me beforehand. And also he took care of like the moment I walked into the office, uh, he took care of like the water was there the coffee was there and it was a very casual talk and it was like a very comfortable talk and he said like say Sanjay I'm so sorry but uh, sir has cancelled the uh, return uh, you know last week only so I couldn't get back to you I was tied up so um, I would really appreciate you uh, coming down when sir comes down I'll personally get back to you now that was the kind of positivity which the HR had showed honestly speaking in my 20 years of career, I have never met an HR manager uh, who was so positively motivated. And literally, I thought like, if this guy is so motivated about the organization, about his director, and he's talking so positively, which he was not faking, he genuinely showed emotion, he genuinely showed passion about the organization, about the values, about the benefits of the organization, about the kind of products that they develop, about the kind of client interaction and the kind of scenarios which are, uh, you know, um, happening with the organization in terms of uh, international market. That was so powerful. And I felt like if this guy is so positively motivated, something strongly positive must be going in this organization and I have to be a part of this organization and the second part was uh, the director himself he was so humble uh, I, I'm talking about uh, of, you know I, I fondly refer to him as one of my corporate gurus uh, and my mentor uh, Srinivas Rao Mukhamala sir um, he was he was heading uh, in the operations with ARC document solutions which I joined um, back in 2000 uh, 11 um, you know and uh, he literally went through my profile and uh, the first question uh, he asked was like uh, it must be uh, very difficult on your part uh, you know uh, coming down here uh, after so many times the meeting getting cancelled and he literally apologized and that was something a literally a shocking thing like uh, he being a director and I was saying sir no it's absolutely fine he was saying no I am very sorry things were coming up I had to have the meetings so constantly there was uh, difficulties in the delays the flight was delayed and uh, you know there was no ticket so I had to cancel it and uh, he literally went through my CV and the first question that he asked was like why is it that you are uh, you know applying for the position of a team leader uh, because you uh, you have that kind of experience and you have that kind of uh, uh, proactiveness in you to fill in to the position 
which we have as the team manager so why not we talk about it are you okay with that and it was like um, it was fantastic and we had this talk and he asked me so many questions and we again had this uh, interview rescheduled uh, for i say this was the interview which happened in three parts uh, first part he spoke about generic my uh, experience my uh, knowledge about the process and so on second he spoke about second day when i arrived he spoke about the work that they did the kind of product that they developed the complexity of the product and um, the kind of complex uh, famous international brands that they are working with we were working with ferrari we were working with oracle we were working even with microsoft at that time and um, these are these are very sensitive clients and he uh, gave scenarios after scenarios and he asked me solutions and on the third day he spoke about the team that i'll be handling and the kind of scenarios which was happening within the team the kind of expectation of the team members the kind of team members uh, which we, you know the team had and the kind of potential that they carried and uh, the first focus of his was like sanjay i feel this team can do much better they are sitting with a lot of more potential it's just that their potentiality needs to be aligned with their skills and the ex uh, expectation of the clients and i believe that uh, you know uh, it could be uh, it could be done by you so see guys that is what i'm talking about see i never been a manager myself uh, before that um, I, I was a team lead i was a team head absolutely fine but uh, a team manager or operation manager head uh, position is something more crucial something more critical but what happened was um, i i uh, since i was working with hp uh, i learned it from there because i was surrounded by great initiative taking leaders great mentors great uh, you know l2s we used to call l1s and l2s and hp was a sin, uh, environment where everybody was taking uh, initiative you, you can walk up to a operation head you can uh, even walk up to a country head and ask for a help and they cannot simply shoo you off like i'm i'm not in looking into this thing go and talk to your manager nothing like that everybody was filling up with taking initiative so guys with that i end up this uh, morning session of morning vibes uh, we need to take initiative expectation is absolutely fine but taking initiative takes you to new heights takes you to new destination takes you to a new level of understanding with that note today guys wishing you all the best take care of yourself and have a wonderful weekend yourself and as we always say learn contribute and evolve